active during the weather. Uh, and when I'm reading the report, of course, I'm looking at it with a jaded eye because I'm trying to read Right. Uh, so uh, I sent it to our, our friend in State EMS, uh, to Merrill and, uh, and Wilma Ray in the State EMS team. And uh, they took a good long look at it and agreed that uh, this is next level kind of resuscitation that went on uh, at the house at that time of the morning uh, that resulted in uh, saving the baby and great continuing care for the mom. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Meryl. What we think about with these um, awards are recommended by agencies to us. Um, we think about members of our community who go kind of above and beyond what we normally expect them to do. And anytime we have to get called, you have to go above and beyond because it's called like coordinating your stuff. We don't see the very um it takes a lot of different things coming together at the right time at the right place to have a successful resuscitation. There's been a lot of advances in the last 10 years. The EMS has become more common to have successful resuscitations, but for children, it was a big deal. So we really want to celebrate this. Um, I would like you guys to know that PDF and Mercury calls in Vermont only make up about 5% of our calls annually. So our EMS squads really don't get a lot of experience with pediatrics, much less pediatrics that really need critical care. Um, one study that I just recently read was that nationally, paramedics manage an adult respiratory patient once every 20 days, but for infants, it's once every 1,087 days. So you can, in Vermont, go your entire career not resuscitate a baby. We only see child or infant resuscitations about 10 times a year in the whole state. So it's not very common. And it's a very stressful call. So we really wanted to show, or we really want to recognize these individuals for the work they did, because it's a challenge to keep up your skills when you aren't seeing these patients in the field right now. It takes a lot of training and a lot of hours to make this happen. Uh, so, um, Chris Clement and Jason Tomlin, come on up, please. Chris Clement was the paramedic. Uh, in charge of the crew that night, his partner was Jason Tomlin, and uh, because a lot of split second decisions got made in the right order, uh, we had a good outcome. And uh, Mary will make the award for the first Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We don't do these things in a vacuum. Uh, we have good outcomes because we have a good partnership uh, with our other agency here in Uh the, the crew that responded to Morrisville Fire that night in support of Chris and Jason uh, are equally responsible for the good outcome that we have. Uh, and I'd like to ask them to come up. Uh, Tim, Bruce, Andrew, come on up. Uh, and we have a unit award. Uh, from Orchard Fire with their names uh, on behalf of us and we, uh, on behalf of CMS uh, for their actions that made it possible for us to have a good outcome. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we're going to step outside and do some pictures. And uh, thank you all for being Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID followed by 
your participants. <laughs> you are in the meeting now. There are three participants in the meeting. I'm just going to make sure I lost my mark. Okay. Okay. All right, next up is you said there's no additions to the agenda. Next is approve the minutes. Approve the minutes of August 2nd, 2021. I just wanted to make one really tiny um, <clears throat> clarification um, because it's a matter of public record. I just wanted to add um, who mentioned that plowing um, on number four? Discussion Main Street Lake property. Um, who who mentioned plowing and runoff or possible changes to idea? I was wondering if that was something that um, Jenny had brought up when we were talking about it. Um, down in like the third to last, third to last, or fourth to last sentence. Page four. Oh, sorry, page four, number four. I have a second for that motion. It was moved, but second. it was second. Go ahead. Anybody Kevin, know? Kevin wasn't here and Denny was Bobby here. Bobby was the wrong motion. No worries. Where's the question second? regarding that? Do you know? I don't know who mentioned it. Yeah, but I didn't. Well, I did, because I, just, I didn't mention it, so. I'm sure we could review yeah. the tape and find yeah. out in a minute yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. And okay. The other thing is, mm -hmm. um, it lists me as absent. I was absent during part of the meeting, but I did tune in by phone at 843 or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All in favor of approving these? Say aye. 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 Bob, sure. I'm trying to keep up with you here. You know, I mean, just a minute. There is one little change on there. Not a big deal. Okay, go ahead. Under the, uh, the appointment of Franklin Reed with the LCP team. Yes. Brought my attention that the team is the word more specific and less talent. Oh, yes. Three, section six. Good catch. More skill and the change is more expensive. Mm -hmm. You got that there? Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Go ahead. Can you go there or? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Loudly, if you can. Oh, that's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Ruth Brown, and I'm Beth. We are just coming to hear her check in with the Dutch board about the sidewalk on Park Street. That we would like to actually see what was torn up and them to serve sit down and grab. And we were just wondering where we were at and what the future. I, I had initially told uh, Pat in particular that we were going to try and put it on this, this meeting agenda. Okay. Uh, I did not have the opportunity to meet with, talk to the town attorney. Okay. One of the issues that was come up we have Rough dollar figures, very rough dollar figures. Um, just based on a very straight, very flat sidewalk, not a lot of prep or anything like that. Uh, so much per foot uh, in this one, um, based on an estimate from Jim Brown. Um, the problem we have at that location is the instructions within our right of way. Phone poles, uh, the fire hydrants, all problematic in getting those moved. 
sidewalk to fit in the confines of our right of way and still be ADA compliant. They don't work. Change the sidewalk might be outside the right, right of way. The problem we discovered was the town of Morristown never obtained, or the village of Morristown never obtained easements for any of the property owners on Park Street for that sidewalk. We have no legal right to put a sidewalk outside of our right of way down that side of the street. And we need to talk to Tim Sargent about the process of obtaining easements. If there's costs associated with the costs borne by the town or are they borne by the residents that they have to pay to have the easements drawn up to give to us? We can totally know the process. That, that piece is an unknown, but we, we can give you rough dollar figures tonight. And when you're sitting down, it's a good idea. Or a sidewalk that has no instructions. Just a straight shot sidewalk. Kevin, what was the price that Jim Bradley gave? Jim Bradley said $50 per foot. It was basically a four by, by five amp, which is the dimension of our sidewalk, which is four feet, five feet wide, four feet long. Square feet. I've forgotten now what the price was per panel. $1,000 per panel. So, Four feet in distance over a total of 610 feet. Price of concrete, price of materials in general, doesn't matter if you're talking about concrete or pavement or whatever you're talking about, it's gone to the roof. So the, the, the cost estimates are, are huge. That's, again, without having to do any work on the ground, that's not our guy's time doing site prep work or anything like that. That is Jim's what he is estimating his concrete work at. And I didn't have the whole picture to draw up to give to the board a proposal tonight. I didn't uh, even the path on for I uh, apologize for having not touched with her sooner about not being on the agenda tonight, but if they wanted to come and talk about community concerns or information we have about what we can bring. How much is the grant? I have the website that leads it's a state site for uh, the pedestrian bicyclist grant.
Airport's building uh, a sidewalk project on that side of Park Street. Well, I think it's kind of premature. I think we need to find out, can we now? This is, again, this telephone pole and ice. Right? I don't know if you put the pole right in the middle of them, because we may never get any. Everybody has to do that. But it would require an easement. Yeah, and we give it back. This is coming along. And illegally, well, I don't say illegally, but we didn't have permission to be there. Yeah, well, those are things that we inherited as a board. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we would have to get more bids anyway. It sounds to me like we're this is premature. We got to get do a lot more groundwork. And and, and, I, and I told Pat that as well. She understood. I simply wanted to whatever information I had to share once instead of yeah. the times we could share it publicly during. Yeah, that's why it was all That helps. We yeah. could. We don't know how much it is, but it could help. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the, the what we can do is you know get gather some more research and then get back to you as far as um, you know what my my plan is to talk to Tim Sark, our town attorney, and to get direction from him, and then I will be able to draft an email to send all the residents along in Park Street. Okay. If, you, you might be able to. I, I'm not sure. That's why I got to talk with Tim. Yeah. I don't know if it's our responsibility to obtain them or if it's your responsibility to get them. Somewhere. The cost is borne by somebody. I just want to recite it one of the full cost. Of it. And then again, it would take 100% participation by all people on the park street in order to do one property per se. I don't want one property any longer. Now I'll give you a Bypass 
you turn on the 100 to come into the village before you get to Irving, there's the big metal on the right. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a couple of pieces of heavy equipment parked there. You've seen it. Okay. Here's the sleeve underneath the road uh, for their lines to go through. However, they need to dig along the edge of the road on the on side of the street, uh, along one side and then a right away in order to make the water connection but just across the highway of Rock Art Road. That's a big thing in our record. Motion to approve it. Motion, do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? And then, yeah. go, ahead. go ahead, Brian. I was just going to say that could you, we talked a little bit about maybe it might break up some glass off. It, it's fully at this cost. They'll, they will repair it. Yeah. Want to make sure that any damage done. We have a very good work relationship. Now let's do it. Don't keep like an eye that. on the project as well. Same thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was cool. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Was your permission I could sign on behalf of the board? Is that part of your motion? Yes, it was. Next, approved pavement cut application for 382 Bridge Street. Let's see. This is part of Nick Nottles, uh, project on Warbridge Street. And he will see the seat here. How are you, Nick? Yes. Yeah. 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 Want to tell you us what's going on? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Nick's going, why did I have to be here? Yeah. Not here. Um, so we're we're at this phase of the project where we're installing the infrastructure and we're looking to put the um the sewer actually comes off North River Street. We need to tie into the village water, which is right on Bridge Street. And um, we need to uh, go across the street to the pole. That's where we're gonna see the project in power. Um, what we'd like to do is uh, August 19th, this Thursday, um, be able to shut off the road um, from the bypass to the Katie Hall Bridge. Um, we'd really like to be able to start at 7 and close it from 7 to until 5. Um, just into the street, you never know what you're going to get and whatnot. But uh, Eric did mention that you know, there's a lot, a lot of construction going on, you know. Hopefully, just a one day thing we're done. But if it needed to stay open later or close early, it would probably be a two day. You have your own traffic control? Yeah, we would just be putting up a sign right off of Bridge Street or bypass on Bridge Street that just said road closed with a couple of, you know, flags and, and the same as the other. Um, highly visible flags. What the PD think about that? Uh, <laughs> I pitched that to the, to the guys doing it because we need to do an eight inch wet pass into the line. The guy that Mostly your commuters. Route 15 is a mess. And right now, Bridge Street is a huge commuter bypass right now. Yeah. The concern is around the hours of the rush hour. So. Yeah. Nick has said, well, you know, if we pick the sign, we'll say it's 8 30 to 3 30, then it's more likely he's going to be there for two days versus a one day interruption going to 7 o'clock. I leave it to the board to make the consideration of what will allow it during the day. Knowing that a shortened day would mean two days. Hours. I'll pick my catch. Yeah. Do it one day because that would really be preferable. I mean, with, with Katie Falls and Needle Eye and Four Corners, I mean, there's a lot of ways that turn around and around from that side, you know, and you really need to that either way. Totally appreciate that there's a lot of construction. I'm stuck here all day today too. And no people have had it, but I feel like if we could just get in, get out, make our payment cut, dig things up once, not have to worry about back filling and redating, it would really be helpful to get the start process. And I do think in some ways the lease is served. Okay. Do a 
if you uh, reached out to any of the local people right there, I mean, that bridge was closed for 20 something years at one point anyway, you know, but the local folks right there, you know, I would think they would want to know. Yeah, I have to yeah, I mean, I was, you know, once I get your guys' approval and know what to tell them, I probably don't be over the next few days. I mean, it's, it's fairly easy, you know, what's your, you know, question going out to the bypass. You're not going to go in the other way. Right. Um, but I, I will make sure I do that. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you know when I get your guys' approval. Yeah, yeah. Um, Last survey or no way anything Well I I'm fine with that. I know the the whole the end goal is to add yeah. four units, right? Fifty four units. Fifty four, yeah. Yeah. Big deal. A lot of people you want to have on your Oh, when you when people dial in to call you about this? Oh, I'm about to call you. I mean, I can get a sign up there the day before. Yeah. That that just says, you know, and I can reach out to maybe the local no, agency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be good. And if, and if there's any other, like, places that would pay, like, you know, any other routes like where people would have the opportunity to make the turn, like on a needle eye or um, whatever road connects you up to state, which like last chance to yeah. detour. I don't if there's any way to yeah. get that. Yeah, when they get get part, like, oh no, now I'm really right. Well, um, where I put the door and Services, just one or two homes. 
this subdivision is going to allow for another home out there requiring the, uh, the road maintenance for the road maintenance. Do I hear a motion regarding this? Motion we accept the name, road name is Red Tree Lane. No second. I have a motion by Judy and a second by Gary. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. I have a question kind of related to this, and I was trying to formulate it, but I don't think I'm going to, hopefully I can do it. Maybe Kevin can help. But is there um, maybe getting a lot of new roads in, which then affects your town's ability to take care of these roads and plow them, maintain them, and then we have uh, equipment and people. Do you have a, an algorithm or something you use to determine <laughs> down, like, when you're at a tipping point when you have to start buying new equipment to take care of these new places or hire people. Well, I mean, like these roads here are just named. They're just named. They're, right. We're not taking them. Right. Not yet. Not yet. Well, <laughs> we don't have to take Yeah. The more that we take over, the problem is looking at how much more of that to the workflow and the workforce. You, you kind of have that somewhere so that you don't come up against that number and like, oh, we need it now. You right. kind of in, in the our, planning our stages. Our following route, our only supposed to be three and a half or four. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Around the whole you're talking four or nine paths. That's sort of our personal right. After which get the The grading, too, and stuff like that. Yeah. Road policy that the select board currently has has minimal distance of thousand feet. Minimum number of buildings uh, yeah. on it. So those I had to factor in there because of never building up buildings out there that covers the, the cost of maintaining a road over the lifetime of the road um, before the road's taken over. Those other things are either on the tax rolls or um, so all offset there. That, that's why it's such a strange policy. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to number four. Approve, sign, renaming, and numbering ordinance. So this is one that was left, uh, Dan had uh, left on the desk for me to, uh, to bring to your attention. I spoke to Abby last week about it, the policy that they, she and Todd uh, had gone through and put together uh, the ordinance process starts with board adopting them. There are some timeline things we have following your adoption of the, of the policy uh, with notifications to the public uh, on the very first step is for you folks to, to adopt the policy. Oh, an old one of these at one time, one point. Needed for, yeah. I like it. I like the one uh, part of it too that talks about uh, getting the 911 uh, numbers out. I was wondering about the penalty phase that most people are going to be able to, to put up these numbers when they're supposed to, but if there's a, somebody out there who for some reason can't afford it, or I'm thinking someone who might be a little older and still a lot of houses out there without numbers on them. Yeah. If there's some there'd be someone from the town like checking in on the person. It's not just finding them right off the bat. Would there be the ordinance doesn't speak to that. As far as enforcing the numbering on the phone. Right. I'm trying to get there. 
to go around and do that. But that is a different and equally important Wait, thing <laughs> because you ask Bill or Denny or any of the PD guys or highway guys for that matter. There's so many, I know from my years on rescue and police that most of the time you can't find the address. It's really hard unless you have intel, you know, lived here your whole life or whatever. Little bit for a green reflective shot. Right. The association was doing it, not the town. Well, no, Joyce, I know Joyce headed that up. But it was done after the association, that's an important thing to know. Right. <laughs> but it would be nice to have something like that oh, come back. Over there was a yeah. team, and that's maybe the deal of fire
20 or 25. They're not cheap for everybody, you know. That's all and everything else. Like, yeah. I know Elmer did that. Um, if you could point to Elmer, I think the, I don't know who, what organization at Elmer purchased it for the entire town, or at least maybe different roads. You want to qualify this with Todd? Well, yeah. Okay. That'd be good. We'll table it for now. Next is award bid for solar powered speed advisory sign. This is Richard. Okay. So, last uh, budget season. Traffic logic was too expensive, and they seem more focused on whether we have four hundred and twenty pallet jacks to help unload the truck every day. <laughs> uh, there was very little information about their product. Right. Uh, expensive, at least amount of effort when it was cheap. Markers have great reputation nationwide. We're always getting the parts from them, they don't need, even though they're more expensive. They broke them. Very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And the machine will, will do for you. Are these, these are to be permanently placed? Well, it's not like Okay. It's to move the holes in the location. Hold it. I see you, there's a, one of these, not this device in particular, but you have one on Randolph Road. And I would tell That's that. The I was happy to see that. I was going to call and ask for one putting like right in front of my house. Mm -hmm. um, because people are using Randolph as a speed. Room. And it is the beginning work day and the end of the work day. And it, I walk the road, I bike the road. I'm, I'm concerned about somebody's going to get killed on that road. Jason's in your driveway. <laughs> I would love it. You have my permission anytime. <laughs> Cookies. <Yeah. laughs> You'll find to come, come when we have them in stock as to where they're going to get placed. Right. <laughs> right. We, there, are, there are several places around town. Yeah. Uh, police would probably have a good idea, you know, based on complaints we received. Oh, which we're not aware of. But, you know, they were here tonight on the community. <laughs> Traffic coming in the village from. Right. 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 They're affected by Washington Highway and the National Guard Army. I come around the corner and get a reminder of other people's speed. <laughs> yeah. So that one on Route 12 keeps me in line every morning. <laughs> then I look for headlights. Here's a picture of Bob's truck. Yeah. 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 I want to preface this to saying I'm all for these, and I they do um, help me check my speed. But is there any um, evidence that it helps um, with it, well, that helps with slowing traffic down? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I believe this particular one doesn't have the ability to arrest. Oh, really? Okay. Right. Our trailer does that too. Right. right. Does it take any pictures? Take pictures of your place. It's surprising though that 
handle control. There are domestic violence classes outside of the two week training. So it takes about a year uh, typically with the availability of the trainings uh, to get someone level two certified, uh, which is a part time basis officer. That's what I was. And when Bob and I started, there was a 62 month hey, class and that's when you have to do you're in a set of car keys and go for it. <laughs> you have FTO. No training, no FTO. Eh? Like you it. learned as you went. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, the learned hard pounds way. learned the hard way too. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And so, a level three certi certified officer is one who is attained because it's attended the full time uh, training class down at the academy, which is 16 weeks plus three weeks. Right. It's uh -huh. like 20 weeks now. Right. And then beyond that, there's FTO, more field training time at your department. It's, a, it's almost a full year, pretty much a full year before your new hire yeah. graduates the academy, gets off FTO, becomes fully certified and operate on okay. That's great, really. Yeah. All right, do I hear a motion regarding this? Okay. Oh, sorry, Danny. What's your time on? The motion actually speaks to the timeline of it. The, the 15 percent would be paid upon the police first paycheck, okay. uh, and then the second half would be paid at the end of the probationary year. Good question. I mean, go. Exactly. So, do I hear? A motion from somebody on this? I move to offer a sign on bonus of $7,500 to currently certified level three police officers that accept the offer of employment with the town of Morristown. $3,750 of the bonus will be paid at the employee's first paycheck. The balance will be paid after the officer completes one full year of employment. This motion will expire on June 30th, 2022. I have a motion by Judy and a second by Gary. Any further discussion on this? Um, just as a point of like a question mark um, around retaining officers, um, have we also looked at um, other options like, um, you know, what the current benefits are, more one K matching, or I mean, like other benefits that would add up to. Um, a bonus, like, or you know, I'm not saying we should um, decide on this now, but just to put it on the table, like, um, are there other things that would make it more attractive to stay on, and are there retention issues? Um, I don't know, um, but you know, yeah, like other perks um, to the um, to the job besides like just the quick cash of a, a sign on bonus. Well, it should be probably be beneficial. Uh, it's just to sit with you, go over the benefit package. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the HR department is much more uh, that sort of stuff. Yeah. They can go over the, the benefit package with right. me, yeah. uh, see those angles. Uh, we yeah. currently have the retirement for the services retirement for the state. They have deferred compensation uh, uh, available. There, there are a very uh, long list of uh, benefits here, uh, very competitive with other agencies. That goes in the pay is also. So we're covered under a contract, and you couldn't offer someone new coming in something different for benefits that doesn't outline the contract right. for everyone. Right, right. So, but I'm glad to go through that to be just yeah. because I'm something yeah. that people have. Yeah, great. Okay, I'm thinking the union kind of keeps you from. Yeah. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is passed. Number seven. You really put them on the agenda tonight, didn't you? Right, guys. <laughs> We've we just done plowing through stuff, trying to get it off our next question. Right. So you got me over here asking questions. That's all right. It's all <laughs> good to ask questions. Yeah. Number seven, appoint new officer for the police department. Richard, you want that one? Okay. So, we have a uh, new
But we it comes out this late in the year because we're waiting for the grand list information. Right, the grand list still is lodged until now, and so we don't have final figures until now. That's why we wait so long. So this is kind of a surprise to the public, right? <laughs> I don't know if it's a surprise or not, but this is when it always has to happen because we can't. We have to know our grand list is going to be before we can figure out how the grand list is going to be. So we're always waiting. That the bills come out soon for November, right? I would assume so. I mean, September is September. Yeah. yeah. Actually, three individual motions there. Uh, I move to set the municipal tax rate of 0 0.9551. Second. I'll second. Discussion. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passed. I move to accept the residential education tax. Oh, yeah, give me the high one. <laughs> <laughs> one dollar five nine four four cents. I have a motion by Gary and do I have a second? Second. Brian? Any further discussion on this? All favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass. Ah. Third motion. I move to accept the non residential education tax rate of one dollar point seven zero seven eight cents. Motion by Judy, second. second by Gary. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approve the warrants. Motion. Motion by Brian. Second. Second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion is passed. Gay report, Eric. Yes, so uh, we are still using our uh, microphone system here with GMA TV to speak. Uh, did an assessment of noise. Actually, pretty comprehensive test here in this room, and are working on uh, giving us a proposal for equipment purchase to uh, provide better sound quality for the folks tuning in. Okay. Highway Department, uh, starting today, you're moving the, the public section concrete bathhead for the municipal parking lot. Um, great. They are going to that tomorrow. They ran into a little issue. With was being built with a bomb shelter on the planter. They didn't look hard on that thing. They built three buildings. Anyway, they're going to bring in a machine tomorrow to bust up the concrete and need to bring a hammer. So uh, that will be done tomorrow. Hopefully that will be completed at the end of the day tomorrow. That was my goal since I got on the board to get rid of that oh. thing. <laughs> I hate to say it, but... I love that thing. Oh. <laughs> We've made a good faith effort to try and save the, the bushes that were in there. They Long time you'd be transplanting anything, um, but we're doing our best. Uh, not okay. Site. We did talk about the parks very well, but they are over at the village site awaiting dig safe to approve the digging by the theater parking lot by the library. Trish picked that spot. Uh, talk to the boards next door, being a good neighbor. It's our land, but just check with them. They had no problems, so there's spots there for those as well. Um, hopefully, nurse will be back to help. Uh, Garfield Road project continues. They are armoring the ditches now. The culverts are all done. All done. The armory is all done. Now. They, uh, they, they, they have done a great job. If you have a chance to out through there, get a look. Um, and it's going to work very well for us to uh, get the final approval from LCP to uh, Rod Moore on that grant and uh, colors to green. Uh, the Wi Fi has been installed down at the Oxbow. Uh, we're working on specking up the camera system. We have an old bid from a company that um, the, the police department used at one time. A little problematic uh, communicating with them. They also, we're looking at a local source uh, body uh, to come down and do an appraisal of the Oxbow and what cameras would work best than uh, uh, some cost estimate. When they come in, um, I met with the new superintendent. 
uh, Mile South. Uh, Frank Nauman uh, seems very approachable. Um, we're going around and meeting with uh, folks throughout. The People know who he is and get a feel for Morrisville. And talked about a possible collaboration on the community service project. I, last year, when I first started, said unanimously that they really would like to work on something for the community service project to show thanks for uh, working here and working with the taxpayers, and also for the taxpayers to be able to see who they are, you know, have business with the business office. Follow up. So, for them to get out there and uh, help help the community, and I suggested to the uh, superintendent that uh, the clubs have in their their guiding their guidance whenever it's they have the community service project. The Honor Society is one of them. I just uh, said that's what we get. You know, our society together with our folks, community project, try and break down the COVID walls that were built by nobody's fault. Just so. Uh, A mixture to have. Any questions for Eric? Eric? Like we're concerned. Gary. No, I don't. I just say I don't have any concerns. Just reiterate the traffic and the speed on Randolph. Um, I have two things. Um, one is um, I took a new job as a part educator um, at the Peter the Pope High School. Um, the superintendent with um, their attorney. That would be a conflict of interest between her and being a para. And that it would be. It would be. Um, so it, it, it's not. So, um, but I just wanted to put it out there. If I can't imagine, but for any reason, there's something of right around the schools. I would just read the cue book. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be working with um, mostly with a few freshman girls for um, academic support. So, yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good change for me. Um, and then another question I have, and this is just putting it out there, um, and it's just a question. Um, because we're, um, it seems like we're looking for new police officers, and um, there has been so much concern, you know, nationally in the public discourse about uh, policing. I'm just wondering, like, if we do have a policy around like anti-bias training. Like, I we did one um, at my last job. It was like a two day. It was like a, a three hour thing where someone came in and just talked, like, you know, really openly around, um, you know, like things your grandfather says that are really offensive like how do you talk to him you know like it did, it wasn't like super intense you know incensing and um political it was just like getting us all to talk about um biases that we all like carry around with us and like how to be um how to be more um, receptive to just like opening the discussion you know and that kind of thing so i just um as a public figure now and um you know seeing that we are looking for new police officers i'm just wondering um, and again, it's a, something just to put out there. If we are doing any anti-bias training, and um, what that looks like. 2014 uh, police academies require annually yeah. uh, training for uh, implicit and explicit bias. It's been yeah. a part of the curriculum. 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that the training is on every. There are some uh, years where they require in-person training, where they have a trainer come up. Uh, academy uh, sanctioned trainer can. can Groups. Mm -hmm. uh, the alternate year typically is an online training that they have to complete. They've been doing it for years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and certainly it's a uh, hot topic, always right. has been. Right. Uh, long before this last year and a half, two years, right. two years yeah. disruption. Yeah. Um, part of the discourse. So, personal opinion, I'll jump on to my family just a little bit. Part of the issue with the public discourse is lack of knowledge. And I think if law enforcement is criticized for anything, it is because we haven't sold our we haven't sold our law enforcement well enough. Right. Because people don't understand what their levels of training are and what topics they even discuss. And I think that's something that we can certainly address 
as a local PD uh, to help educate the public on, on the trainings that they are required to do every year, um, articles, press, press releases, and stuff like that. There's a lot of the criticism that's levied at law enforcement simply because people aren't aware of the training they are doing. And, and the reflection of the actions of very few officers in uniform in the field, very generic skew of, of, of toward a profession that's uh, very honorable and loads of top notch individuals. There is much about these issues. So, uh, I think we probably do a better job of selling the officers and selling their training. Right. Uh, and that, I think, is the biggest criticism. Yeah, so I think it would be, um, I would like to see, and I can assist with that in some way if it's possible, um, just, uh, you know, just, um, like you said, communicating to the public and letting them know that our, our law enforcement officers are going through training, like for how long. I think it is, I think, like you said, um, it's a lot about public perception and um, the, the more open the dialogue. Yeah. I agree. So. Right. I wondered, have you heard anything about actual We are at this point waiting for um, word on a, a hearing date. All we're at. <coughs> Most recently, uh, Tyler sent. A uh, revised plan uh, to uh, the National Resources for uh, review, which uh, raised the bottom elevation. That? So, uh, raised the elevation of our excavation such that it would uh, not impede upon the Avery Aquifer, referred to by his profession that he had hired. Excuse me. Uh, we're back from the agency and natural resources that they were fine with that revision. Uh, and it's all we're waiting for at this point is the, the hearing date. Dr. Tyler, today. I don't understand why it's so strong. The other thing is do we have any more of the papers that need to be signed for the leave? <laughs> I love having you come back in and see me, Brian. <laughs> I think we've got oh. it. That was one of the our conversations today. That's how he gets us to come back in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't have to. That is a sneak in on the night. Back in. Right. Use your code. Yeah. yeah. More. Papers. Nothing more to sign. Nothing more to sign. That's. Ordinance until, until we leave. The ordinance is taken. You, oh, you okay. didn't go through the ball that's okay. Thank you. Okay. And I, I wanted to, uh, it's not a concern, but I'd like to see about having another get together with the village trustees as sort of a maybe break bread. And, you know, we've done it in the past at the country club, and, you know, Ed DeBoer's done it, and some other folks have done it. But it'd be nice to get together. It doesn't have to be a dinner, but it could be a dinner. Again, and um, you know, it seems like we've had a lot of constructive things happen from those, and um, just to touch base, and you know, as far as planning, you know, things to come in the coming year, whether it's replacing a culvert and or paving something that they're going to tear up the next week or whatever it is, I think it's important to have that communication. And but if you, I was thinking about calling Penny, but if you want to reach out to them, Penny and I have already talked. You have very very focused and first to get communication. Uh, yeah. COVID caused us to, to have a, a lapse in our annual meal right. uh, with them. Um, the village trustees are just as anxious to do as we are here. Yeah. So uh, it's just a matter of us putting the, putting the day down with the one of the meetings. Uh, uh, September works pretty well. The golf season slows down a little bit. So uh, that's a great place.
Valley's for us to meet. Mm -hmm. I don't know whose turn it is to pay. <laughs> it may be ours, I think. It may, it may be. So that's why. But yeah, we'll we'll get that done for sure. We're actually doing a, a joint project with Water and Light later this week um, down on uh, East High Street. They uh, have, you know, they're having staffing shortages like all other places are. Right. Uh, but they've got a, a project down there. The apple trees have grown up into and around the following power lines on the border of East High Street. And uh, they needed to uh, well, they needed a tree taken down at least <laughs> It worked out really well. So uh, well, they're going to provide the bucket truck and the chainsaw. We're going to provide the manpower and uh, take care of both projects at the same time. <clears throat> yeah, that's the kind of thing that's great to have a dialogue like that. I know we haven't always had that, and I want to preserve it. Cause I mean, it's great to work with. I, yeah, yeah we've, we've been uh, numerous phone calls back and forth. Uh, their, their, their staffing issues are severe at this point, and they're working through that and doing the best they can. They've got a lot of retirements recently. And, uh, yeah, they've probably been there 30. Yeah, 35 is next. Okay, good. More to, more to come then. All right, that's all I have. Next is the old business. Now we're going to go back to discussing Main Street Plus. We've done that. And we're done. Okay. That part done. Other business? Employee issues, executive session? Yeah. Oh, sorry, John. My Wednesday night is our last night, so we've been back in October. Uh, we got six the first night, we got five last week. So we're looking to. Most of the, the you have Johnson and Johnson? I'm sorry. Johnson and Johnson. Johnson and Johnson over, eight, over 18. Okay. And this is the last week for the music series, Cornrows. Um, okay. music series on Wednesday night. Anybody else have anything? Denny, sleeping back here? Kind of fun. <laughs> okay. All righty. It's a pause. <laughs> Got you, bud. Okay, well, I'm make a motion to enter an executive section to discuss what month or employment or evaluation of the public officer or employee pursuant to 1 BSA section 13 parent 4 of the remote section. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Further discussion on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. 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 Aye.